Hello, I'm Eric Hanischek from the Hoover Institution at Stanford University, and I'm here with my colleague Ludger Wusman from the University of Munich. Recently, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development released our study on the relationship between education and economic growth. They did this at an important meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Ludger, we, you and I have been working on this problem for a while, but aren't you still surprised at how difficult it is to get policymakers to pay attention to these important issues? Yes, that's right. Actually, all nations really have always expressed a very important commitment uh, to the issue of uh, education quality, but when it comes to school policy and really change to it, you don't see much. Maybe that's because uh, actually most of the gains that you would uh, get from such reforms are far into the future. Um, politicians and parents today may uh, really underestimate the full uh, ultimate gains that we can get from such reforms. Well, maybe our attempts to bring future gains back to present day will help because the num numbers we get from simple policies like making the U.S. or Germany look like Finland have remarkable impacts on our economies. That's right. So actually in recent years, economists have uh, become very interested in why some countries grow so much faster than other countries. Um, and so in these analyses, usually uh, at least one measure of human capital, as uh, we often put it, um, is in there. And initial results have been very disappointing. Um, but there, uh, human capital is just measured by educational attainment or just years of schooling of the adult population. And there you don't see a strong uh, connection to economic growth. Well, I don't think it takes much motivation to convince people that, in fact, uh, measures of what people know are much better than how long they spend in school. Uh, no one would believe that a year of schooling in Peru is the same as a year of schooling in Germany. Right. And interesting enough, if you use these kinds of measures uh, in the analysis, uh, the results change fundamentally. And we find, actually, that the skills of the population is probably the driving factor for economic growth of countries. That's a result of uh, a very basic but very powerful statistical model where we relate the economic growth of countries over a long run between 1960 and 2000 to the initial level of income of the country, to the uh, initial years of schooling, and uh, to this new measure of uh, people's knowledge in math and science that we have derived from uh, 13 different international student achievement tests taken over this period. Now, what we find is, first of all, that such a model explains, explains most of the differences in economic growth across the countries, uh, and that um, these test score measures, the knowledge of the people, is the driving factor indeed. And finally, once you actually control for the effect of the knowledge, simple years of schooling actually do not add at all to explaining economic growth, meaning that uh, just sitting in the class room without learning really is uh, of no economic value. Well, maybe we can convince people about the importance of this by indicating the magnitude. We did simulations of a reform policy for schools that would, over a 20-year period, bring each of the OECD countries up to the level of Finland. Uh, the chart that I'm showing you now, in fact, uh, gives an indication of how important that is. What we've had to do is take future gains in income that come way out in 2050 and beyond and bring them back to the current day in present value terms so we can compare them to other spending and uh, that we're making in the economy. When you do this, the chart indicates first, Finland doesn't gain at all because they're already Finland. Uh, but Japan and Korea gain a little bit. They're close to Finland in terms of academic achievement. But the United States, which is a ways away from Finland in terms of achievement today, would gain a stunning six plus times of its current GDP, or gross domestic product, from this improvement in our schools. That, for the United States, amounts to $103 trillion. Right, and for the 30 OECD countries in total, it's even more, it's $260 trillion US dollars. Uh, that's so much more than any of the current um, packages to fight the recession would be worth or what we're currently discussing uh, on U.S. healthcare reform spending. Um, 
And also, actually, we looked at some other uh, reforms as well. If you would just lift the bottom part uh, of the uh, population and make sure that uh, every person has at least a minimum skill level, that would um, amount to more than 70 uh, trillion US dollars for the US alone, and uh, again, nearly 200,000 trillion US dollars uh, for the whole of the OECD. If such large gains are not enough to really push the case for school reform, I don't know what else would, could do that. Well, Luger, I have to thank you for coming over from Germany to the United States and to Stanford to help try to get this message out. Hopefully we can make some progress convincing policymakers here and elsewhere that this is worth it.